Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. From floods to wildflowers, the effects of climate change can feel overwhelming. To counter this feeling of what's referred to as climate anxiety, we want to talk today about what Vermonters can do to act locally and think globally. And there's no better place to start than with Lake Champlain Sea Grant. 20 years ago, Lake Champlain Sea Grant was created with support of Vermont U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy, who advocated to include Lake Champlain in the National Sea Grant Program. Today, Lake Champlain Sea Grant is a leader in research, outreach, and education about Vermont's Great Lake. And joining me to talk about a few of the projects and programs for the upcoming year is Ashley Eaton. Ashley is the Watershed and Lake Educate education coordinator for Lake Champlain Sea Grant. Thank you so much for being with us, Ashley. Yeah, thanks for having me. So before we talk about specific programs, let's put into perspective how Lake Champlain Sea Grant encompasses not only one lake, but all lakes and really waterways in Vermont. Yeah, that's a great point. So Lake Champlain Sea Grant is a watershed based organization. So we're adhering to natural boundaries. So we are working in Western Vermont, Eastern New York, and then part of the watershed is in Southern Quebec. And really what's happening across the watershed, whether it's on land or in surface waters, such as lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, it really all impacts the overall health of Lake Champlain. So it's pertinent that the research, education, and outreach activities that we are involved in address those needs across the landscape and across the watershed. Okay, and one of those initiatives is the Green Schools Initiative. So tell us what that is and how you're involved. Yeah, so the Green Schools Initiative is really aimed at reducing runoff and pollution entering Lake Champlain through the Lake Mimpermagog and Lake Champlain basins. That is, that are, that's coming from public school grounds. So the Green Schools Initiative offers funding and technical assistance to schools and state colleges to help meet the three acre general permitting um, stormwater regulations. So Lake Champlain Sea Grant and the University of Vermont Extension is partnering up with the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation and Green Print partners on this project. And specifically um, Lake Champlain Sea Grant will be working on the education and outreach to communities. Okay, and so who's eligible for this program and, and is there a cost to enroll? Yeah, great, great question. So there is no cost to enroll. Schools that are in the Lake Champlain Basin and Lake Memphermagog Basin that have three acres or more of impervious surface are eligible to um, enroll. At this point in the project, basically every school that is eligible has been contacted by Green Print Partners and is enrolled or in the process of enrollment in phase one, which is the um, technical design. So uh, they're now f kind of finding out if they fall under Vermont's three acre rule. And uh, so what is that again? Yeah, so the three acre rule is basically any site that has more than three acres of impervious surface um, is going to need to manage their stormwater on site. And so basically schools are large areas. They have a lot of buildings, parking lots, things like that. And so usually that um, puts some of our larger schools in that bracket of needing to manage their stormwater on site. And this Green Schools Initiative project really aims to support schools in meeting that stormwater regulation, providing technical assistance and funding. F fabulous. And why the focus on stormwater? Let's just clarify what, what, what that is again, and why yeah, is there such yep. an important focus on it? So one of the main concerns when we talk about water quality here in the Lake Champlain Basin, as well as Lake Memphermagog, is non-point source runoff. And so non-point source runoff is pollution that's entering the waterways. It's usually diffused from multiple sources. So stormwater runoff, which is a type of non-point source pollutant, is usually generated when there's rain or snow melt events. And so where water is flowing over impervious surfaces, such as paved streets or parking lots, buildings, you have water moving really quickly and basically bypassing natural infiltration and filtration processes. Okay, and we, and we don't want that stuff into our waterways. Um, so you've got a curriculum that's ready to go for teachers and students. It's called Soaking Up Storm, uh, storm Water. Um, so why don't you talk to us a little bit about that, that teaching tool? That curriculum. Yeah, so soaking up stormwater through stewardship and education in the Lake Champlain Basin is a curriculum designed for upper elementary, middle, and high school teachers and is really aimed at helping teachers and students understand waterways and the impacts that stormwater can have on them, learning to identify possible sources of stormwater in their community, engaging in stewardship projects that help clean and minimize stormwater runoff and surface waters, 
and help others engage in stormwater stewardship. Okay, and building off this teaching tool, Lake Champlain Sea Grant holds workshops to teach the teachers. Uh, talk about what opportunities you have for educators. Yeah, so this summer we're running a course called Stormwater Education Methods, and this course is specifically designed for in-service teachers to help them build understanding and awareness around stormwater stewardship. So throughout the course, they're engaging in hands-on activities around conducting experiments, visiting green stormwater infrastructure sites on campus. And at the end of the course, our goal is that teachers are ready to step into the classroom and take what they've learned and um, engage in similar activities with their students. So would they need to have taken this workshop to teach the soaking up stormwater curriculum? That's a great question. So the curriculum is free to anyone that wants to use it. And the course is just an opportunity for folks to dive deeper into the curriculum um, and learn a little bit more with our expertise kind of on hand. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna jump to something I'm pretty excited about. Um, the Sea Grant um, might be starting up its Lake Champlain public trips, which um, are on board a, sh a, a ship, which is very exciting. So talk about how this fits into your mission and what's gonna be uh, different for um, participants. Yeah, so as you can see on screen here, we have a new vessel that is coming to the University of Vermont. It's slated to arrive here in June. And so this vessel um, will be a hybrid electric catamaran um, style. So this is a new um, type of vessel for us at the University of, of Vermont and is really gonna extend the um, opportunities for us to engage in research and education and outreach. So there will be a new boat. For those of you that joined us on the Melisaira, you're in for a treat. You can come out again and um, join us on our new, uh, new vessel. And we are hoping to offer the public trip series again this um, summer. It is still a little unknown just because of COVID. So check out our website to learn more information and get the latest details later this spring. Okay, and that's the Lake Champlain Sea Grant website. You'll, you'll just Keep, yep. keep, keep us informed because that's very exciting. Yep. I'm sure a lot of people would want to go. And it's not just for researchers. The public can, can get, up, get on board. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and we'll talk about cultural history. We'll talk about basic limnology and a little bit about the current research that's happening and also discuss kind of the new features of the vessel. Terrific, Ashley. And um, so, so let's go back to education. The emphasis is really on hands-on learning. In, um, in all of your programs, and it gives students and teachers agency to, to really make a difference. So, so talk about why that's so important to your outreach work. Yeah, we emphasize hands-on learning in our programs because we wanna create an engaging experience that's founded in both critical thinking and problem solving. And basically what we're aiming to do is cultivate skills that um, are necessary for participants to kind of apply their learning over time, over their lifetime, and engage in meaningful action and stewardship. So we're trying to extend the learning beyond that moment that they're working with us, but really um, to make it a lifelong process. And, and speaking of lifelong, uh, we've been talking about schools, but what about communities or people wanting to do their part? Uh, what programs does Lake Champlain Sea Grant offer them? Yeah, we have a lot of ongoing research projects right now that are really um, focused on kind of improving the health of waterways across the basin. The first is kind of timely right now. So smart salting is a project we've been working on to reduce chloride runoff. So this project looks at how to most effectively use rock salt on roadways and driveways. Um, another for homeowners is the raise the blade campaign. So thinking about, you know, tips and practices around best lawn care management. And then lastly, if you're really psyched about stormwater um, infrastructure, we have a series of bike and walking tours that you can um, participate in via our website. And they're in a few cities across the state, like St. Albans, Burlington, Montpelier, and Rutland. Fantastic. And, and certainly, I mean, you're working with road commissioners and what are, what are, what are the best practices around salt and sand? Because we're certainly um, seeing that right now. Uh, so that's, that education piece is also very much a part of your program, right? It is, yeah. One of my colleagues, Chris Stepanek, leads that project. And kind of one of the pieces that she's working on is technical advisory for um, professional development. So making sure that folks are calibrating their salt trucks that they know how to do that so they can calculate how much salt they're putting down on roadways. I think for municipalities, in addition to the environmental benefits, I think they're also looking at the economic benefits of ensuring that they're applying road salt in a way that is most effective and um, 
most fiscally responsible as well. Right, and and another thing that I that I it, I tuned into around stormwater was when you say it's a multi-source um, piece, the, the single source, you're not worried about that so much anymore. People aren't just dumping pollution into lakes. It's what's coming from all over from each of us. And that's why raise the blade or, or having a rain barrel. Uh, this, is, this is a time for all of us to really participate in, in these programs. Yeah, it is. And I think what's so complicated, you know, we're approaching the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act and something that we can kind of reflect on is that we really did in that um, legislation focus on managing point source. And so now as we move into an era where we're predominantly focused on non-point source, it really is kind of a multifaceted puzzle. So there's many solutions and it does take an all-in approach to achieve the, the best results for um, generations to come in terms of our waterways. Absolutely. Well, Ashley, I want to thank you and the Sea Grant program for all the wonderful work that you do. We're, we're so lucky to have you here to really work on Lake Champlain, which is a, a big, big job. And all of the waterways in Vermont contribute to this. So if you're up in the Northeast Kingdom or down in uh, Brattleboro, all of this uh, really matters to all of us in Vermont. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you so much. And for more information about the Green Schools Initiative, or how to access the Soaking Up Stormwater curriculum, you can visit uvm.edu slash seagrant and follow the links to programs. And that is our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. <laughs>